Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. I just want to firstly say I'm really, really sorry about the length that uh, has been between my last upload. I've been very busy in Canberra uh, building a new salon and working on um, something very exciting. However, I'm here today in Melbourne at the Matrix Technical Centre and I'm with a colleague of mine, Jess, and we're going to do some really great hair for you. Today it's all about the blondes. So they say blondes have more fun, so I guess there's only one way to find out. Let's get straight into it. This is Abby. Uh, Abby's uh, been kind enough to come and see us today and we're gonna do her hair. Um, I'd also like to introduce you to Jess. Jess is gonna do the color. You can see that if we just put Abby's head down, she's got a considerable amount of regrowth. So we're gonna stay in blonde. As I said, blondes have more fun. And then you guys should be super, super excited because I'm getting to cut all the hair off, which is really exciting. Um, again, as always, as I explained to Abby, because sometimes when people um, come and sit down for me to do YouTube, they're like, is this guy going to shave my eyebrows off? We're going to always work within commercial genre. We want to make sure that this is something that you out there may want to have. doesn't mean that we can't be creative and push boundaries. I just want to make sure that we don't go too far um, towards that sort of avant-garde or too safe and be super conservative, just do trims and something quite simple. So Jess is tasked with the colour today. She's got the bigger job than me. So I'm going to let her get started. Um, and while she's actually applying the colour, I'm going to get her to explain to us what we're going to do. So, um, do you know what you got to do now? Yeah. Let's oge. I'm super excited to be here today in Melbourne at the L'Oreal Academy. Um, we've got Abby here and I am making her nice and blonde and beautiful. Um, we've got some old colour and it's been a while since we've done it and it was an old scalp bleach. So you can see like the grow out has a really harsh regrowth line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up and I'm going to add some highlights and lowlights in there just to really soften it out so it doesn't just look like we've got a stop and start kind of a thing. And we're going to put some like nice bold pieces at the front. looking at Abby's hair I noticed that there's actually quite a strong disconnection here and one of the challenges we have as hairdressers is sometimes we actually have people come to see us who have previously had haircuts and they're asking us to do things that um, can be made just somewhat more challenging because of existing elements that have been left from the previous haircuts not to say the last one was bad it's just um, I feel like rather than trying to avoid the fact or not discuss that, that that's going to be somewhat problematic. We're better to then revisit what we thought we could or couldn't do and design something based around that. So originally I was going to take it to that level, but I just feel like for Abby's face shape, we need to leave it a little bit longer. So we're going to lop the back off and we're going to use the front as a guide to sort of where that sweeping fringe is going to come from. I'm going to do some layering on the top so it can be worn a little bit looser without a part if she needed to. But effectively, I'm going to give her a really cute, modern, cheeky, bob length haircut using some graduation in the back. We're going to start with a symmetrical parting. Horizontal graduation. And what I'm going to do is take this entire section at once for purposes of cutting my guideline. And then I'm going to pick this side up. And I try and use a little bit of the first section I did as a guide. 
chin down just a little bit more. It's always good to start with the head in a slightly forward position. Be really careful on the tension here. This is the most important part and if you get this right, you really can't mess it up from here because all we need to do is bring all the hair above this down onto this stationary guideline. I try and work one centimetre sections at a time. The actual reason why sectioning is important. So sectioning in itself is not the crucial part. It's making sure that the sectioning you do is um, manageable for you and that, that differs for everybody. So we're around about the occipital bone now. You can see that beautiful graduated shape starting to come in there. You'll start to notice that it is slightly curved, even though we're not using diagonal forward, it's because when you're cutting a straight line, when it falls onto a round head, it looks curved. One of the things I want to do is I want to make sure we don't have that classic, and, and I would say that there's nothing wrong with it, but I don't want that classic short to long look. So unlike if I wanted to have it shorter to longer, um, I would preserve the corners, but I'm intentionally cutting the corners off so that it actually squares in to the side because I just feel like that's a little bit, it's a little bit more modern and something a little bit different. I was gonna keep doing that now. Everything's gonna be brought from here all the way down until we run out of hair. And then um, we're gonna move on to the sides. Okay, moving on to the sides. And now with the sides, all you wanna make sure, and this, again, this is just like my little tips is, just make sure the hair's combed out from behind the ear. Now, I have to be careful because Abby's got some nice jewelry in her ears, but you don't wanna stretch it down over the ear. In actual fact, if that's happened to you before, put your hand up, <laughs> it's happened to me. You know, you just go like this and stretch it down too hard and cut it, then when you, dry the hair, you end up with this little lump. If you're worried about that happening, I would simply just say, just do this side bit when it's dry. Like just dry it off and cut it dry, that way you don't have to stress about it too much. But for me, I'm just gonna make sure that, again, using the wide end of the comb, I'm just gonna comb it very loosely over and I'm just gonna square that off now while it's wet. Like that. Spin around the other side, if you can do the same. So one of the other things is if you're doing long hair, this is a really good tip because if you're doing longer hair here, you're gonna get in the way of the shoulder. If you just like turn the head to the side, all of a sudden the shoulder's no longer in your way. So I find that really effective in, in long hair. But so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm doing it here too. Now just look back for me, Gorge. Beautiful. Just make sure we're balanced. Feels good. This side does feel the slightest little bit. And I think that was because of the, the last haircut. 
Yep, I see it. Just a tiny little bit here. All right. Awesome. Now we're going to move on to the front and the layering, but we're going to do all that dry. So now I'm going to dry off Abby's hair. Um, you guys would have seen me wrap dry the hair before because my foundation length is uh, done. So one of the things that I do in the salon, and not always, is a lot of the times when I'm not making major changes to the front, or as I said at the beginning of starting this haircut, there was existing elements in the hair, I'll dry the hair off first and layer it and do the bangs or the fringe or shape it um, when the hair's dry because it allows me to then see um, what the hair's actually doing. But because I was removing, well, it wasn't a lot, but it was a significant amount of length, um, I do like to do that when it's wet. Um, so now that's done, I'm gonna dry off Abby's hair and then we'll show you how I'm gonna do the rest. So let's have a look what we've done. So going back to what I originally said about working, working with the shape or the existing elements are in the hair. And that was really important for me. And you can already see that the length I've chose, now this fringe bangs that were there and grown out actually already works. This is all very heavy and clunky. I'm gonna go through here now and do some layering through here and some texture. Then we'll get into the top and then the front. So now what you're gonna see is the baseline that I created. You can see that little bit of graduation on the ends, and it is very, very minor graduation. One of the things that I share about what I do with other hairdressers is, rather than cutting this blunt and then going back and texturizing it, I try and choose a projection that's gonna give me the effect on the ends that I want. So then I'm just using texture to enhance it. So that's what I've done here uh, with Abby, is I'm just gonna add some layering I'm just gonna take that corner off a little bit and you can see that that's now starting to shift that weight line and then I'm gonna add some texture. So working uniform to the side of the head and then stopping. I don't wanna follow this all the way around because I'll end up cutting a hole. And back to the other side. Okay, so what we're gonna do in the sides is make sure that it's square. As I said, I don't wanna have a shape that's longer towards the front. Take that off here, natural fall. And then again, I'm gonna pick up my crocodile. A good Aussie name for this tool, made in Australia. You can get these, um, there's a link via um, my YouTube and Instagram. You can buy them on my website, ship them worldwide, so. Um, these are a great tool. I'm sure that there's other countries that sell a very similar scissor with a similar design, but you can see that they're, they're quite, um, quite the texturizing scissor not really thinning. So texturizing and thinning is, is obviously two very different things. We don't want to thin the hair out too much. Just again, going through the side. and tucking behind the ear and just checking that when this is worn behind the ear, just head this way for me. We don't have a huge, 
you know, like a lump or weight of hair there. And then we're just going to nick this off just here. Again, really focusing on texture in this haircut. Um, I've said previously I create my foundation using a straight blade, but then when I want to be creative and create some texture, I'm not opposed to um, using a really cool scissor like this that helps us create a, a different texture. It's so cool. And do the same on the other side. First, we'll make sure we're not longer towards the front. Making sure it's square. You can project the hair out and you can scoop away this way. You can freehand it like this. As long as you're doing whatever it is you're doing, you're doing with intent and you can actually see, visually see what it's actually doing on the hair. Let me just grab another comb. Hands up. Those of you who drop your comb 10 times a day like me, if only we had a dollar for every time we did that, eh? But make sure you wash it or you got a spare one ready to go if you don't have time. And again, we're just gonna just turn it this way, babe. We're gonna tuck the hair behind the ear and just this with this little extra length and weight is there. We'll take that off. Super cool. Now it's time to layer the top, cut the bangs. I'm just going to give you a blast because you've got hair all over you. Okay, layering. Now, layering is great, but one thing you don't want to do is layer hair into the back that doesn't grow there. So you see, I just comb the hair to the, towards me like this, and then that's how I know that the hair in the back belongs in the back, grows in the back. We don't end up uh, layering hair into the back that's not going to live there. So um, I'm going to just take about a quarter of an inch off, working uniform, round to the side of the head, stop to where behind the ear is, and I'm going to over direct everything back to that point. Now, given that, um, as I've already mentioned a few times, there was already some layering in the hair. There's probably not a lot to cut, which you can see there. So don't go chasing hair if it's not there to cut. Um, it's obviously already short enough. And then on this side, there's actually a fair bit to cut. Making sure we're balanced and good. Now I'm going to connect the front to the back with some increased layering. So that length in the back there, you can see there's this hair in the front. We're going to connect. And now we're going to bring everything to that point. It's a stationary guideline. We're increasing because we want to retain that length on the sides. This will help us get rid of some of that squareness or triangular if it was a little bit longer. It's just going to flatten and elongate those sides a little bit. As I said, if the hair doesn't reach, don't go looking for it, it's not there. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. Increase layering, projecting the hair, and then we're going to go through, this time, with my straight blade, and we're going to break all this up. We're going to deconstruct the top and make it really loose and fun. Seeing as we're here on the increasing part, connecting the back to the front, we'll start here. And again, this is personal. How you want it to look and feel, how you want the hair to move is up to you. I just don't like using texturizing scissors on the top of the hair um, because I actually find that um, it can, not always, but sometimes it can grow out. Not as well as if you took the time to use a straight blade. Chin down for me, gorgeous. And now again, coming through the back here where it's very heavy, making sure that we don't chomp across our design line because we're going to take out that shape we've just created and really personalizing and softening this until I feel like it's looking and moving the way that I want. 
until we get that cool Bixi feel and look about it, which is effectively a very short layered bob with lots of texture. And I think the texture just takes it away from that classic space and makes it far more modern. There is many different ways you can do this and I'm going to show you, as I always do, the way I do it. So first thing we're going to do is comb the hair all the way onto the face. Now, um, as I've learned with Abby, she finds that somewhat uncomfortable. So please, if you're doing this on a client, uh, make sure you prepare them for it because especially if you're doing it on wet hair, it can be very comfortable. I wouldn't attempt this on wet hair personally, but it can be done on wet hair. And then you can see that I've taken it. One second, one second. I've taken it to the temple. So let's turn your head to the side, babe. So I've taken that and I've tucked that behind the ear. And we're going to comb that across so you can see. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. Here's a triangle section. Yeah. You can see the projection. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut this into a rectangle. So we're going to remove this point. I'm going to use the back of my section as a guide. And take that off. And we're going to do this in one section. And I don't want you to drop it because as soon as we've cut the length, we're gonna add our texture. So there's nothing to cut at the back. You can see that I've just made the shape more of a rectangle. Just close your eyes if you haven't already got them closed because you're gonna get a little bit of hair. Now this is the important part. So at the back, the section's obviously a triangle. So at the back, the section's leaner. So it doesn't need as much texture as it does at the front. However, the rear of the section is the section that's gonna come around here. So it is important that it is seamless and you do add texture. Otherwise, you're gonna see that really heavy line in the side. Now you can start to see that this is starting to become a little bit more transparent, but you can see in there how thick that is. I will get that hair off your face in literally six or seven seconds. Okay. Close your eyes, please. All right, let's spin you around face to front. It's looking pretty cool, actually. So now I'm just running my hand through and I want to feel it. And again, this comes down to visual, feeling, and just, again, using my crocodile scissor only underneath. Just want to really loosen this up. This is why I love cutting like with geometry and geometric shapes and foundations because it is the ultimate platform to be creative and really have a lot of fun with texture. Um, I've never been opposed to texture, contrary to belief. People like, you know, blunt cutter or, or waste precision, whatever. And that's true in the respect of the construction of the shape because I don't believe that you can cut a foundation using texture. That's my personal belief. I think it's best done using a straight blade. And then once we've done that, we can use scissors like crocs. We can do slicing, channeling, whatever it is you feel works best for you and your client to really personalize and soften haircut. I'm getting like a little bit of Michelle Williams vibes out of here at the moment. I don't know if you know if you know who that is, probably a bit young. I'm going to get you to um, jump up because if we can't see you, you jump up, step back here and you come back here with me and we're going to get you to like turn around so everyone can see the shape we've done in the back, turn around this way again. So you can see that we start off with that little bit of graduation and if I turn Abby to the side, just like this, you can see that it's just so 
like we get that little bit of like shape in the neck. We didn't want it to be too like cut in, like really shaped in hard in the neck. And then the layering on the top gave us some volume. You can see that it's got that beautiful texture sitting in there under the back. And she likes to pull these little bits out. And the thing that I like about that is it flicks out a little bit. We've got a little bit of softness on this side. And then we can have that so side sort of partially tucked or totally tucked. Jess, if you don't mind, if you can just like give us a recap on what you did. Yeah. So I went through and I foiled with highlights and lowlights through there just to create some of the dimension that we were talking about and soften that regrowth. Like we had a really harsh regrowth line from previous colour and we wanted that to just look like really seamless and really soft but um, not losing too much dimension and not too much of the depth in there as well. And now that when you've got your colour and you mess up the haircut a little bit, like make it a little bit textured and cool, the colour works really well. Like Best. It. Well, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Once again, um, welcome, Jess. It's Jess' thanks. first time here. She was a bit nervous, but I think she's great. <laughs> um, you're going to see another video that we do together. Um, thanks, Abby, for your time being amazing. She looks amazing. Um, please make sure if it's the first time you've uh, seen one of my videos, subscribe if you want to keep up to date on all my other videos. Um, so you've got to smash that like button too because help me with the algorithm because since I've been a bit lazy, I've sort of dropped off a little bit. So um, that'd be great. And um, stay tuned because lots more content rolling out the back end of 2023 to make up for my lack of presence. So thanks once again uh, from the Matrix Technical Centre at L'Oreal Academy Melbourne. It's goodbye for now.